while a deliberate attempt was made to make every figure that was in the vintage line in Masters of the Universe Classics, that didn't hold us back from doing all of the variants. And we were very conscious of trying to get to lots of variants of the main characters, especially the ones that were in the vintage line. And Dragon Blaster Skeletor was absolutely one of those. In fact, he was the second variant of Skeletor. Well, I suppose third, counting the original version. Well, I guess it depends on whether or not you count his boots being repainted. But he was the second legitimate version of Skeletor, following up on Battle Armor Skeletor. And all of the variants of the main characters in the Vintage line were released more or less in pairs. So you had Dragon Blaster Skeletor, and you had Thunder Punch He-Man that came out at the same time both released as slightly deluxe figures, and the same thing in classics. So, as noted, on a deluxe card, Bl the Dragon Blaster Skeletor was a larger retail footprint than the regular figure, because the card was extended. Now, while this may have been part of the reason why he was often confused with Blaster from Double Dragon, well, they were absolutely different characters, and one is an African-American fighter, the other one is a demon-faced villain. So, Dragon Blaster Skeletor, big in the vintage line, and an absolutely necessary character to update into Masters of the Universe Classics, the line that was available on Matty Collector between 2007 and 2015-16. So a lot of care was taken in how the original figure was done and making the update an homage to the figure as well as a replication of the vintage action feature without actually including a mechanism. So the feature that he had was a water backpack, which in this case is shaped like a dragon because everyone wants their backpack shaped like a dragon. Well, at least all the Targaryens do. And very much like Cobra Khan, the figure had a removable head that had a pump mechanism, so as you press down on the head, water would squirt out of the mouth. It was essentially exactly like Cobra Khan, but in this case, a backpack with a dragon head, as opposed to the figure himself. But exact same mechanism now just applied to the main villain in the line, and, well, it led to a lot of fun customization, both in the vintage line and in classics with swappable heads, since the dragon head was done just like the regular heads in classics. Of course, he also came with his green chain and collar, which any time an action figure can come with a slave collar, well, you're doing a lot of good for the kitties there. And what's interesting to note about Dragon Blaster Skeletor is he kind of is almost the exact middle of the vintage line, meaning fans or kids who got into the line at the beginning and kids who got into it later on, they sort of all had a chance at this figure. He... There's a lot of figures that came out late in the line that the beginning kids didn't get because they grew out of the brand, and early figures that later kids got or couldn't get because they missed them. So Dragon Blaster Skeletor coming out more or less right in the middle of things does really represent a figure that a lot of fans had simply because it was that Venn diagram overlap of early fans and later fans. Now, while the figure never appeared in the 2000X Mike Young production series, or the Four Horsemen redesign, there was definitely a lot of fan art of what he could have looked like had he been in the 2000X series, as well as even fan customs, which I'm a huge fan of, because I cannot do this. I'm, I'm such a terrible customizer. I've made a few figures. But it's really cool to see how fans would reimagine this version of Skeletor if done under the Mike Young 2000X design aesthetic. So... Very different, obviously, from classics. With classics, it was much more about recreating the vintage figure, but with more articulation and deco. And of course, since we were selling them online and didn't have to factor in a retail margin, we could put more deco and more accessories into the figures than they would ever get in a retail release. One of the other neat things about the pairing of always having a He-Man and Skeletor coming out was there was a new poster. So this was the new He-Man and Skeletor done on the new poster for uh, 85, I want to say. Yes, 85. And Foosh, I love, they recreated the poster using figures. That was really cool. Now, as I noted, this figure, by coming out in the middle of the line, had fans on both sides of the age spectrum. But honestly, I haven't heard that many talk about this being their definitive Skeletor. A lot of people like Battle Armor Skeletor and considered that their Skeletor to go to as far as uh, play. But Dragon Blaster Skeletor seems to stand out as sort of, yeah, I had him, but he wasn't necessarily my favorite. 
He does use most of the existing parts from previous Skeletors and comes with Skeletors half of the power sword because that's how it worked back then. Although I think uh, in the new show they're separating the swords again, but that's a whole other topic. But having another Skeletor in the line was also great for classics in general because we wanted to kind of always have the main characters out there. And while we couldn't always go back into production on an older figure due to MOQ, having a new variant come out of the figure was a great way to bring in new fans. And what was great about having a new version also was being able to extend the storyline because the basic original bio covered Keldor's transformation into Skeletor, so now we could tell more of an extended story and fill in some gaps. And of course, the dragon motif led a lot of fans to associate Dragon Blaster Skeletor with the other dragon figure that came in the line and actually came out the same year, Drago Man from the Four Horsemen. And with their red coloring, well, I guess you could see them as maybe similar species. Speaking of that dragon, that little buddy, so, you know, this was one of the few figures that came with his own, I guess, little pet, unless you count Imp or Broom or something like that as a pet. I don't know, is Broom a pet? I probably wouldn't say so, but the dragon definitely was, and he was removable from the back, and his head was fully articulated. As noted earlier, it was the same ball joint as a basic figure, so you could swap around the head with both Skeletor or any other figure. There wasn't a water squirting mechanism inside, since that would have required a lot more tooling and engineering, which was kind of out the window from day one with classics. But we did give him a real metal chain, which is also awesome, something that Vicor also had. I, I love it whenever we can give figures actual metal parts. Now, the way the dragon clipped onto the back is interesting to note only because a, uh, a, a fix was needed, a retool. So this is how he clipped on. He had a what's called a T-square on his back, which is kind of a peg on top of another peg called a T-square, and that just went into a hole on the dragon's chest. But the original, I guess, well, not well, prototype, I guess you could say, the, the, rather the first production sample of, that, of a Dragon Blaster Skeletor that we got back, well, that's this guy here. It's one of the few that I kept from the line, and that's because, well, he was modified. He did not have the T-square. He just had a flat piece of armor on the back. So the dragon just kind of had to balance on his shoulder. And so he had to go back, and the tool had to be modified for full production in order to add that little tool. Also, Dragon Blaster Skeletor should be noted as coming with the final mini-comic for 2012. And, of course, at this time, we thought that was it, and that uh, we weren't going to do any more mini-comics. Of course, it features Terror, uh, the Claw Skeletor on the cover, but, hey, what you going to do? It doesn't always work out perfectly with story and figure. But artwork of him was always something that really popped up because, you know, hey, when you got a skull-faced guy with a dragon on his back, I mean, it just looks very Motu. And, of course, the purple and red armor really pops, giving him that added color that a lot of the, uh, the, well, the previous versions of Skeletor were, were essentially just purple. So the red highlights really made him pop on your shelf. I always thought that was, that was a word used all the time when I was in the toy industry. we got to make the figure pop. we got to make the packaging pop. So I don't know if maybe that's why they added the red in the first place. But I loved how the chain actually went through the armor and uh, wrapped around to the dragon on the back, really kind of, well, it made them permanently linked together so they couldn't be uh, fully separated because the uh, arm grip didn't fit through the hole in the armor front. But hey, you know, that makes sure that Skeletor is always going to have his dragon buddy with him no matter what. And while, you know, he couldn't have smoky eyes and the dragon couldn't actually spit water, it was still a figure that I think came out a perfect classics rendition of an update of Skeletor, with many more versions of Skeletor to come, since that was our quest, get every vintage figure done, even the variants. Here was Dragon Blaster Skeletor, checked off the list.